Welcome to this free webinar on Omics Logic Data Science. In today's session, our team will be sharing information, examples, and an overview of Omics Logic training resources designed for anyone to learn data science for biomedical data, as seen in application to projects sourced from current topics in biomedical research. In this webinar, we will introduce biomedical data analysis techniques and approaches that you can master and adopt to help you conduct better research and learn about how data science is changing medical research from diagnosis to treatment selection and development of new therapeutics. My name is Bipsha Biswas and I am the Omics Logic Community Manager responsible for daily interaction with thousands of users that are a part of our bioinformatics community managed by Pine Biotech. Now, before I move on, I want to ask you to take this poll, which you can now see on your screens. The first question of this poll is, what country are you from? You can choose from this list. I hope everyone can see the poll on their screen. You can put it in the poll. If you do not see your country listed, you can put that down in the chat box. Thank you so much, Kony and Abdullah, for letting me know. And Athira, I see that uh, you cannot hear any sound. You can leave the Zoom meeting and join back again with Zoom audio. That would be helpful. Okay, we have a lot of participants from India and there are a lot of other countries which I can see. So Lydia is from Malta, Vitor from Brazil, Abir is from Malaysia, Franco Javier is from Peru, Iraq, Brazil. So we have a lot of participants from different parts of the world. And if we move on to the second question, it is, what is your level of education? The first is high school. The second is bachelor's degree, third master's degree, PhD. And then there are other degrees which you may have taken. You can just uh, select the uh, answer that is suited to yourself. Thank you, Ashwini, for letting us know. The third question is your area of interest. So you can choose between these different areas, bioinformatics, biotechnology, cell and molecular biology, computer science, data science, infectious diseases, oncology, and others. This poll is going to help us learn more about our audience today. And the last question is, what are you expecting to get from this webinar today? So are you uh, looking forward to learn more about data science, learn about introduction to machine learning tools, learn about bioinformatics, programming in R and Python, or acquire new skills? So I'll keep the poll on for about another minute. And we will then continue with today's session. Okay. So thank you everyone for voting and for sharing your answers with us. Thank you Harsh for sharing uh, about your interest and Ashwini as well. Thank you, Dr. Dina. So I will be ending the poll now. And if you have any other answers, or if you want to share with us, you can please put your answers down in the chat box. So moving on. 
I would like to start by introducing Pine Biotech, the company behind Omics Logic, and share with you details about the upcoming Omics Logic programs and explain how the training resources we will discuss today will be used in this data science program. So Omics Logic is a program for bioinformatics training that was developed in collaboration between Pine Biotech and the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center. What we will discuss today is a result of hard work by an amazing team led by company co-founders, Dr. Alfred Tauber and Dr. Leonid Brodsky. Dr. Alfred Tauber comes from a medical background and has extensive expertise in oncology, immunology, and biochemistry of inflammation and has been recognized internationally for his generous support of many research projects and initiatives that support data science training and applications in medicine. Dr. Leonid Brodsky is the director of the Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center at University of Haifa and is an expert in bioinformatics and biostatistics. He has numerous publications in mathematics and bioinformatics and over the course of his career has developed multiple novel algorithmic approaches to biomedical data analysis. The rest of the team you see here includes experts in bioinformatics, computer science, and training. And some of our team will be presenting today as well. Over the course of the past several years, our team has been collaborating with a number of academic institutions around the world that have participated in content evaluation, curriculum review, and project design. As a result, the Omics Logic programs have been thoroughly evaluated and are known to lead to excellent outcomes. Importantly, the programs are designed to support students with minimal bioinformatics background, including biology and biomedical studies majors, as well as faculty interested in bioinformatics, data science, and biomedical research. The goal of the Omics Logic programs is to provide training in bioinformatics enabling independent research guided by mentors and peer example, developing a growing community with shared passion for data-driven research and appreciation of citizen science, enabling students, clinicians, and faculty of all backgrounds to develop novel and independent research using latest technology in life and data sciences. The program is designed to offer an introduction to statistical analysis and machine learning and a broad overview of technologies and project examples to learn about and develop practical data science skills using user-friendly cloud technologies as well as R and Python coding. So who is this program for? This program is designed for students starting from the undergraduate level to faculty and researchers from both biology and clinician backgrounds who can participate to learn more about data science and biomedical research. And as I see from the chats today and from the poll, there are a lot of uh, faculty, a lot of researchers as well as students who have joined us for this webinar. Now let me introduce you to your mentors. In the upcoming Omics Logic program, you will have the opportunity to interact and collaborate with an international team of experts. Uh, am I not audible? No, you're audible, Bipsa. I think some people have trouble connecting to audio. Okay, thank you so much, Ilya. So in the upcoming Omics Logic program, as I was saying, you will have the opportunity to interact and collaborate with our international team of experts who are specialized in the application of data science to biological data sets. So let me introduce you to the main speakers of today's session. We have Dr. Harpreet Kaur, who is a certified Omics Logic trainer and expert bioinformatician and will guide the hands-on sessions and assist participants with projects and analysis during the program. Her area of specialization is cancer genomics and machine learning. Dr. Mohit Mazundar is our Omics Logic project mentor and an expert in big data computational analysis. Dr. Mazumdar has a PhD in computational biology and over 10 years of experience working with industry and academia. Ilya Protsky, Pine Biotech co-founder and CEO, 
in his current role has extensive experience working together with industry and academic partners that are applying multi-omics integration and bioinformatics to a variety of biotechnology and clinical applications. I would now like to invite Ilya to talk about the increasing significance of data science in biomedical research and introduce you to the types of challenges we will be addressing in this upcoming program. Over to you, Ilya. Thank you, Bipsa. And thank you everyone for joining. So first of all, I wanted to share the polling results so that we can look at the data. So we see here that many of you have either a master's or a PhD uh, in various domains. And I think this is especially going to be important as we're going to be speaking about data science, which includes some specialization in a particular domain. So we'll talk about that in a second. And secondly, in the third question, you can see that many of you are interested in bioinformatics. So we'll kind of start from there. We'll talk about the relationship between data science and bioinformatics, what's new, what's different, and how those two domains relate to each other. But also many of you have already a specialization in biotechnology, cell and molecular biology, and other biomedical research domains. So I think that's very important. And as many of you are expecting to learn about data science in this webinar, I think what we are trying to do is balance an informational web webinar that will give you a broad perspective on data science in application to biomedical data, but also to introduce you to a lot of uh, tools and resources that you can leverage on your own between now and when the program actually starts. And I'll go through some of those examples in my presentation, but then when I pass it on to other co-presenters, I will, uh, I'm sure that they will share a lot more technical detail. Okay, so let's start. I'm going to close the poll and share my screen. So let's get started. What is data science? Data science, which is what this webinar is dedicated to, is really a convergence of data or data management and manipulation, sometimes referred to as wrangling or data handling effectiveness, analytical methods for hypothesis testing and statistical inference, and some kind of a specialization domain. So that domain could be biological research, finance, marketing, clinical, business, internet of things, a number of different things. And so typically when people say data science, they apply data manipulation and data management technologies and statistical inference to a variety of different domains. So in a lot of senses, data science is broad. And then we can compare this to bioinformatics. Bioinformatics is essentially the same thing because when we speak about informatics, it's an older term that rose to prominence in maybe the 80s and the 90s when information technologies was really the key term. And so when we speak about data management, essentially that's information technologies. And statistical inference, including analytical methods and machine learning, all fall under the same domain of using data analytics to gain insights into some phenomena. But specifically, bioinformatics is focused on biological phenomena. And in today's world, the biological data has been tremendously changing. So let's see how has this data been changing. Well, one of the emerging trends after the emergence of high throughput technologies that have started originating in the biomedical research domain from the Human Genome Project is the emergence of big data. And we're not just talking about big data files that are maybe instead of megabytes, now are gigabytes in size. No, we're talking about a whole stream of data that is increasingly complex because a single phenomena is being characterized by multiple types of data. And those data are speaking about the same thing from different types of data perspectives. So when we speak about the nature of this data, I think it's very clear, especially in this latest pandemic, that not only has this data changed in size, changed in type, it also is increasingly real time. And so I think we're entering a time 
when biomedical research data from being a, an expensive, high commodity and high value experimentation into an ordinary stream of data that will completely overwhelm our ability to extract insights. If many of us who are not experts in data science already and bioinformatics already cannot leverage the tools and the basic skill sets to manage effectively, utilize analytics to extract insights from this data, and also share the results of our analysis effectively. So what kind of data is this high throughput data? Collectively, this data is referred to as omics data. So omics data can play a role in a variety of things that we can capture. For example, we can talk about phenomics or the way that biological tissues and samples look and what are their characteristics, including clinical characteristics. We can talk about genomics or variation at the DNA sequence level. And so this data provides us insight into per nucleotide variation or regions of DNA that have a variation from the reference genome. We talk about epigenomics, where we can look at histone modification and DNA methylation patterns throughout the genome. And as a result, we can also look at gene expression, which is characterized by abundance of different mRNAs, non-coding RNAs, but also alternative splicing events which can help us differentiate between different conditions and sample types. So one key area that you deal with in bioinformatics is the ability to understand what these different omics data types define and describe and how to utilize effective processing tools or pipelines to convert this data to structured data. And so what you can see here is a table. This is a table of expression, but this table of expression can play a serious uh, challenge, can become a serious challenge when we extract this, uh, the reads or the sequencing digital data directly from high throughput experiments. And so one of the primary ways that bioinformatics has been different from data science is that includes an understanding of what the signal explains in terms of the molecular features that it defines, and also in the deep understanding of what algorithms do in the process of extracting this structured data from individual digital signals that are captured from the machines that produce this data. But today, this kind of data is not, again, as I mentioned, a commodity, but really a standard practice across a variety of biomedical applications, including biomedical clinical research, where we look at populations of patients, uh, including molecular analysis of different pathogens that cause and drive disease progression, and an understanding of how to apply these insights to the domain of biotechnology, biochemistry, and clinical diagnostics, where therapeutics are developed and characterization of these phenotypes helps us understand clinical pathologies. So what we want to do in this program and where we invite you to really join for hands-on sessions, training guided by our mentors, and a variety of resources that you will gain access to, and we'll describe those in detail in just a few minutes, is really a complete roadmap for data science in application to biomedical research data, where we will cover important topics like finding data sets, being able to explore and visualize these complex data sets, understand research methods as you review publications, and gain insights and understanding. And so importantly, this is a roadmap from the very beginning to application. And we're hoping that many of you that maybe have minimal understanding of what data science is or minimal experience practically applying bioinformatics to these types of challenges will be able to do this for the first time. But also for those of you that probably have heard about RNA-seq, have heard about metagenomic data, have heard about genomic variation, you will be able to see how combining these technologies together and becoming effective with data manipulation, data wrangling, effective processing of this large data, and then analytics and machine learning, you can really gain insights into some of the pressing challenges that surround us, including in application to a variety of domains 
like oncology, infective, infectious diseases, and complex conditions that might not even have a direct clinical application. So omics logic is really like a map. It's a map that will take you from where you are right now, asking questions about your current background, interest, and focus, into the field of data science where molecular data, omics data, can become logically clear so that your analytical capabilities could be applied to extract interesting insights from a variety of different example projects. And so a big part of what we provide in this program is not just the training on how to apply these different omics uh, technologies, but provide you with curated examples that include diagnostics and cancer biology, uh, look at single cell and tissue composition, as well as microbiome and infection. And you'll find this in the context of different projects that you can get started with and then carry on to introduce them as a starting point for your own research project as you develop them throughout these programs. What we'll look at as the context of this process of applying data science methodology is the process for understanding how the data was collecting was collected what was the experimental design to then processing and cleaning and preparing the data for analysis performing exploratory data analysis where you can visualize and mine this data for patterns and then taking it to data analysis stage where you have different statistical methods or machine learning tools, which essentially represent a model that could be trained to provide you with insights into an inference, so biologically interpretable insights that you can demonstrate and also share as a replicable process so that data sharing is effective. So let's look at some of these methods in a little bit greater detail. What we want to cover in this section is preparation of data, and once the data is prepared, how do we select from the many tools that are available out there, and probably many of you have heard about, or maybe even applied, with a deeper understanding of what are some of the logical components of these methods, what situations to use when we apply the different methodologies, and how to combine them together so that we gain insights into our data sets, and can translate that insight into a next decision, potentially about selecting the next method of analysis. As an example, we can look at gene expression profiling, right? We can look at differential gene expression, which is a very simple example of a statistical comparison, but we can also apply clustering techniques to help make that data visually more presentable. We can use principal component analysis to explore variability between samples, but we can also design our experiment to now use that insight to eliminate outliers, look at very defined groups of samples, and ask questions about what are the features that help us understand the differences between samples. So these are just some of the examples that we will use, but in the greater context, you will see how bioinformatics and big data will bring out the important characteristics for use in clinical and therapeutic applications to a variety of biomedical research problems. And so we'll illustrate these problems using different examples. To speak about one of these examples and give you a clear um, understanding of what we mean by curated data sets, I want to pass the microphone over to Dr. Harpreet Kaur who has an extensive background in genomic research and application to cancer, specifically to, uh, to liver cancer. So Dr. Kaur, I'll pass it on to you. Thank you, Ilya. Let me share my screen. So hello, everyone. My name is Harpreet Kaur and I have a PhD in bioinformatics. My research is on biomarker discovery for diagnosis and prognosis of liver cancer. So what inspired me to study liver cancer is the its high mortality rate and lack of precise biomarker that can help uh, diagnose liver cancer at an early stage. It is considered as sixth major malignancy 
in terms of incidence and fourth in terms of mortality worldwide liver cancer is often at times misdiagnosed or detected too late for any effective treatment another factor that contribute to poor outcome of the liver cancer patient is the frequent reoccurrence of tumor so with this concern in mind i have framed number of research objectives with my collaborators to address this issue using various bioinformatics techniques for example in the first project we used large scale transcriptomics data to identify a diagnostic biomarker panel for hepatocellular carcinoma which is primary liver malignancy so in this study we employed nearly 30 data sets containing nearly 4000 sample to elucidate transcriptomics biomarker panel for diagnosis and prognosis of liver cancer implementing various statistical and machine learning techniques like svm random forest nave based etc for the next part of this research project we use transcriptomics and methylation data of scc patients to scrutinize scrutinize omics features that can discriminate patients based on its stages that is early and the late stage here we employ tcg data of nearly 350 patients to elucidate 51 features that include 30 rna transcript and 21 methylation cpg sites that can distinguish early stage and late stage sample based on various bioinformatics approaches in the third part of this project we use transcriptomics data to scrutinize diagnostic biomarker panel that is specific for cholangiocarcinoma which is another major liver malignancy here we employed nine data set containing 350 cholangiocarcinoma 133 adjacent non tumorous cholangiocarcinoma patients and 90 scc patient samples to scrutinize cholangiocarcinoma specific transcriptomic signature implementing a number of data mining techniques like random forest logistic regression extra tree lda etc so conclusively in this whole study we have identified a three chain based biomarker for the hcc that can discriminate hcc samples from the normal samples and then we have elucidated three ccs specific signatures that can discriminate cholangiocarcinoma samples from normal as well as hcc samples in the next part we have identified a 50 51 multi omics features that include 30 rna transcripts and 21 methylation cpg site that that can discriminate early and the late stages of hcc samples so in my current role i am omics logic bioinformatics trainer with the pan batter i am assisting participants to learn about data analysis machine learning and visualization in application to the large data sets in biomedical research besides we are designing various research projects using publicly available data sets so in continuation to the liver cancer research here we have designed a research project based on the multi omics data of liver cancer patients to find out the molecular signatures that are associated with the clinical and the demographic phenotypes of the liver cancer patients here we explored different omics data from the tcga like rna mirna and clinical data of the liver cancer patients in this project we have implemented various multi omics data integration tools like snf 
I cluster plus O2 PLS that are in already available on T bind for server. So here we are trying to understand how multi-omics data integration analysis can provide us the holistic picture of this lethal malignancy and also how they are associated with the diverse clinical and demographic phenotypes of the patients like their tumor states, risk factors and gender of the patients, etc. Participants can explore this project during the upcoming data science program. I'm looking forward to being your mentor in the um, upcoming omics logic data science program. Now I would like pass this session to Dr. Mohit, who is our project mentor. So over to Dr. Mohit. And if you have any question, you can post your questions in the chat box and we will address those questions. Okay, so over to you, Dr. Mohit. Thank you, Dr. Arpreet. Okay, let me share my screen. Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Mohit. And as you know by now that I'm one of the global representatives of Pine Biotech and in my current role, I'm working with undergraduate, postgraduate and PhD students, uh, scientists and researchers for bioinformatics research and training. And in this process, collaborating with universities in India and Africa to provide support in, in uh, research. So I have completed my PhD in computational biology and have been actively working with academia and industry to solve important research problems using tools and technology that suits best for the problem. Today, uh, the, world is seeing the, uh, the world is seeing biomedical data science as a great opportunity actually to solve some of the unanswered questions that require our immediate attention. So talking about big data and bio biology, so big data and biology has an important role in shaping our understanding of living beings better. Most impacted by this change in the, is the area of genomic medicine, where it is now possible to move from generating reference or population level data to producing data from individuals, right? And we have been seeing this uh, as one of the case that is ongoing with the with the different strains of COVID coming in, genomic uh, understanding and sequencing is playing a huge role in identification of those uh, strains. And as it is, it has been like data has always been an integral part of life sciences. But with the availability of computational power now and the volume of the heterogeneity of this data has also increased immensely. So, I mean, it complements each other in a way and to make sense of this large volume of data available, I think a biologist or a computational a biologist need to be able to know the processes and the methodologies to interpret this data and understand the patterns. And, where, and that's like maybe the biggest challenge right now for biologists and bioinformaticians. So if you see in this uh, latest survey, you'll find out that of course, AI and big data have the biggest impact. However, to understand this application and to be able to find information from this big data, it is sort of important to learn about the analysis strategy and get experience working on this real data sets. So together with our uh, research collaborators from Tauber Bioinformatics Research Center, uh, LSU and uh, UCSF, we have prepared projects for you. One of the projects was highlighted by Dr. Harpreet as well, but, which she has prepared along with our team. So these projects will help you, uh, will take you through a project-based approach we call, and where we take data sets from high impact publications and use them for practical exp exercises. So it's kind of you know difficult to imagine exactly what the biomedical industry will look like in in years time but if you can see this uh, image and you can see that how bioinformatics has been helping uh, transforming basic sciences into translational research projects 
So there have been a lot of uh, large innovative research projects which are ongoing. One of such a research project is International Human Cell Atlas Initiative 10 that aims to create comprehensive reference map of all human cells. So we are also collecting information from devices, apps, wearables, and impl impl implantable technologies, right? So in this uh, data science program, uh, we will learn about analysis strategies that I just discussed and methods by getting hands-on experience working on real data sets that explains these challenges in, for example, precision medicine. So this is an example of precision medicine. And with this uh, understanding of what the authors have achieved and what the data set is about and why this publication is important in the context of breast cancer where they have uh, where the authors have collected uh, so many data sets on cell lines and have concluded would be a journey that we would take you through during this program to be able to learn about this project itself so it involves like several methods as i was telling you that the data sets come from cell lines then we have other features like we have the uh, the drug uh, response so combining these features and understanding the application, like cancer is a complex uh, disease, right? And what we have been doing so far is to be able to understand the, the disease from a single uh, aspect. Yesterday, we had a meeting with one of our uh, interns working on an uh, important aspect of breast cancer, uh, you know, classification, understanding, applying machine learning methods. And we realized that the patterns that we see from one analysis is not sufficient to help us understand uh, you know what is going on so their integration of multiple data sets and that has been one of the key features of today's world's bioinformatics multi omics integration helps so during our omics logic programs and in this data science program uh, we will learn and we will be using uh, different components that are connected together and we will in, in this way, we will combine online sessions and we, we will use self-guided study materials and practical assignments for this immersive experience that has been proven to be very effective. And we have been working with hundreds of students and interns who are working and doing great uh, with the projects that they are working on and that I will be discussing in a couple of slides. So the program itself has uh, theoretical materials that you will be able to find out on this uh, website. So let me take you to the website uh, and the program page, uh, the organization page, where we will find all these resources that are associated with this program. All right, so this is the organization page and uh, this is on our educational platform and this educational platform is a unique platform because it comprises of in, in in itself it comprises of a classroom and it has all the resources that you would need to go forward and start this understanding of this entire uh, program um, using this uh, different resources that we will be discussing now so uh, the first page and i think um, yeah thank you Deepsha. you have shared the link yeah. So in the first page, you will see that uh, there are several sections within this uh, program. So you have home, you have forum, you have courses, you have projects, you have uh, syllabus assignments, and then you have resources, user projects, progress, events, faculty members and managed. So you kind of have a overview of all the components here in this page. So you can start by browsing. And once you have the access, you will be able to see this that the sessions are the upcoming sessions that will be coming up one after another and we this is like needed to be updated but we also have a forum here and where we can track and we can see individual progress like what i have been doing what i have been learning what i have been finishing so i have a specific profile similarly each of the participants on or or the users who register on this on this platform gets an academic profile so this academic profile or portfolio shows your achievements that you have gained throughout this program and can be showcased as a profile on your uh, on your cv or on your um, on your linkedin profile 
so moving on to the next uh, tab you will see courses so these are the courses that have been already added uh, that you will have access to once you register so you can go through these courses to develop an understanding of how multi omics data is helpful uh, and then there are application of uh, omics data by using machine learning so transcriptomics 3 is about that so where we are using supervised machine learning and unsupervised machine learning on a table so that table is table of expression in this example uh, in transcriptomics so as you will see from the courses uh, then there are projects that are the next stage after doing the courses because here you are learning about the application so uh, how this uh, these uh, technologies are applied uh, to a specific research so learning from project examples and then you have the syllabus and one of the i mean important aspect of this program is the interactive nature of this program which i'll be discussing in a lot more detail later on but to tell you about this that uh, we kind of have a point system that helps us uh, understand that what have i i mean how much have i learned throughout this process so the platforms that you will be using and i'll be coming to that <laughs> in the next slide that we will be using this educational platform where you can you are going to take courses and pro and go through projects and at the same time uh, we will be using a server platform where we can run our experiments and a coding platform where we can run our codes so all of them are connected here uh, in this uh, page and you will see your progress and the progress of the entire group and we will be able to see and work together to achieve uh, results that helps us uh, with that helps us with a better outcome from this program so as i was uh, promising you about the different platforms so the next platform that i wanted to discuss is the tober bioinformatics uh, research platform so let me go back to my presentation uh, and go through the courses how the courses actually look like so we kind of review important terminologies and provide a perspective from experts on these exciting fields so each course has quizzes that allows you to see how much you have learned and assignments for hands on practice so these assignments are also uh, being uh, also helps you to understand the coding behind this so how practical skills help find answers to biological questions and as i was telling you that this program is project oriented uh, with real data sets uh, use cases and examples adopted from high impact publications so projects are extracted from relevant publications on topics that fit the program and student profile so it's kind of customizable so you can choose about, uh, your research topic if you're interested in uh, infectious diseases learning about uh, biological aspects of that if you are interested in neuro neuro degenerative diseases if you are interested in learning about um, agriculture the application of uh, data science and big data in agriculture and obviously we have several other examples as well so these are some of the data types that you can see on on the left and then some project examples and the next step after doing this like these courses kind of lead you into multiple projects uh, from the courses to the projects and this serves as a springboard into the world of bioinformatics so uh, with this information uh, let me pass it uh, on to miss deepsha uh, to talk about the important deadlines and maybe uh, and tell you about the program registration options and after that i will uh, i will take you to the tbioinfo platform and show you how the tbioinfo platform is helping us to do these kind of research and and we will discuss about the other platform which is the which is the coding platform and how this entire uh, program is uh, is going to work as a participant point of view so over to you uh, bipsha uh, thank you so much uh, dr mohit so i hope that uh, everybody has gotten an overview of the different resources that you will have access to during this program and we will be sharing the other highlights very very soon now let me show you the registration process for this program uh, 
So this is the registration link and I will post the link in the chat box. If you have already registered for this webinar via the link, then we have all of your uh, information. Yes, uh, step two, so we will be emailing everyone the video recording of this session as well. So once you are in this page, this is the pre-registration page. So if you're interested in joining the program, you can actually register via this page. So if you go down this page, let me take you section by section. Uh, you will have some uh, description about the program, then the different topics that the program will be covering. You also have the full schedule of the program. So the program is starting on the January, on January 12th and will end on February 11th. It is a one month program. And each week we will have two sessions at uh, 9 a.m. CST on these dates. For more details, uh, please fill out this form so that uh, you will be receiving an email with all the different information that you need to register yourself to the program and also the other necessary details. So once you are registered here, you can of course go ahead and check all of these different uh, sections in this page. So once you're registered here, you will be redirected to this page. So now this is the checkout page as you can see. So in this page, all you have to do is click on pricing or get started. Either of it will lead you here. Now you see we have three options. We have also explained what are each of these three options and what do they mean. So all of these three membership options will give you access to this program. The only difference in the basic, uh, intermediate and advanced is the mentor support and the project support that you get. So in the beginner program, you will have access to the courses that Dr. Mohit has shown you, access to the code playground, the online sessions, and the three asynchronous projects. So these are the asynchronous projects that you can do. So you will have access to all of them. The intermediate program on the other hand gives you access to a mentor who would be available for you during this one month session and you can have a one-on-one -on -one meeting with your mentor to discuss any questions that you may have or even ask any questions and clear doubts. So this is beyond the group session. So that is the benefit of the intermediate membership. While the advanced membership, uh, give me a moment, I think. Uh, while the advanced membership gives you access to not just the mentor support, but also an extended 30 days of access to this program, which means you have two months of access to the program for 365 USD and the opportunity to work on a novel project of your own. And I will be showing you some examples of these projects which have been developed as part of these programs and part of our, uh, different other programs uh, in the recent past. So this is what the difference in the three membership level means. But if you are a beginner and you're just looking forward to start with a program and learn about data science, we definitely recommend the beginner license to start with. For any questions, you can always reach out to me, marketing at pine.bio, with these questions. And for faculties uh, or researchers who would want to uh, discuss more, you can reach out to Dr. Mohit at mohit at pine.bio for facilitating these programs in universities or for your students. So now as i promised you that i would be talking about the different project examples so here is a project example you can also take a look at this project example later so our project development is a step-by-step -step process where we first train everyone and then each of these participants they can propose their own project and they will be uh, developing the project along with the help of a mentor. So as you can see that these are some of the recent projects that were completed in 2020. Uh, this is by one of our intern and two of our other program members who collaborated to make this project. 
we have other projects as well. So these projects uh, range from different topics like neuroscience to infectious diseases to oncology to even COVID uh, right now. So as you can see, there are several project examples and these are all novel projects that were developed by either our research interns or by program members. And you can have a look at all of these uh, different projects and watch the videos as uh, the participants present them. So please have a look through this. And now I would like to pass this on to Elia to take forward today's session. Elia, over to you. Thank you, Bipsa. <clears throat> so now I'm sure that all of you are ready to get started. And so to give you a taste of what we will be doing during the uh, actual program, uh, please uh, visit this website, code.omicslogic.com. Bipsa, if you could please post that link and you can register here for free. So before we start the program, we want you to know what you will be doing throughout the different sessions that we'll be conducting. Uh, please let me know once you're registered. Uh, again, this is free registration. So you will see the landing page and you can uh, log in by clicking here on get started uh, and creating an account. So please let me know once you are here so that I can show you a couple of examples of uh, scripting challenges that we'll be doing in R and in Python during the program itself. Okay, so please let me know by putting in the number one once you have registered on codeomicslogic.com. All right, thank you, Lydia. So if you're already in there, you will see these two courses, Introduction to Data Science in R and Introduction to Data Science in Python. Okay, so for those of you that are registering right now and see that a few of you are getting registered right now, you should be able to see some of the introductory courses here for data science. So let's take a look first at this course, Introduction to Data Science. All right, great. Thank you, Subtus. So as we discussed, the very first step is to actually load some data. So many of you probably already know how to load data, but I know that for me personally, when I was getting started with R, that was one of the major challenges. In most of the tutorials, you will find how to write hello world, you will find how to do some multiplication and addition. But if I want to take a data set that I understand how it was created, what does it mean? I want to be able to load that data set. So to do that, let's go ahead and start by going to this first one where you will see how to import data directly into a coding session that we will do here in just a second. So you can go and read through this introduction, click on next and see a few options of how to actually load the data. For example, you can load a table, a TXT table. You can load an Excel sheet or a spreadsheet in CSV format. Now let's try to do it ourselves. We have here a couple of examples. If you are doing this on your computer and probably you'll be doing in some kind of a developer environment like RStudio, but here we are going to do it directly in the browser. So you can see here how you can load the data by adding a link, a URL or a path to your data. And we have an example data set right here. So you can copy this link, paste it right here. Sorry, paste it right here. Okay, make sure that you keep the apostrophes. 
and then click on run. Okay, so you can see that as a result, when I print DF, which is what is in my object, because R is a, an object-oriented language, I can print DF and it shows me what's in the table. So you have specimen one, two, three, four, and then some columns, flower, tree, and bird. So this is some biological data that describes what's inside. Now, as you know, in Excel, it works a little bit differently. So you can see here, for example, let's copy this link and put it right here. One of the things that is different about Excel is that Excel can have multiple sheets inside it. So here we only have one sheet, so it's very easy. But if you have many sheets, you can start working with multiple sheets inside your data set. So those are some of the basic things that you want to get familiar with is just how to load different data sets. Now, as we showed before, many of these data sets are already available in a process structured format on NCBI. One of the things that you can use, and we'll quickly go through this example right here, is using principal component analysis, we can understand variability between samples. How do we do that? So if you go to this third course, Dimensionality Reduction, PCN Visualization, you can scroll through and see an example of a gene expression table. So here you can see genes, samples, these are names of different cell lines, and here they are grouped by their phenotype. And their phenotype is a subtype of triple negative breast cancer, normal life, basal, luminal, cloud, and lung. So four different subtypes. You can read more about this specific data set. Click on next. And now let's look about, learn a little bit about what this, uh, uh, what these different packages will do to help us visually explore this complex data set. Why is it complex? Because we have at least 15 different genes. Each one has some pattern of up and down regulation of that gene. And we are asking the question, how does this pattern help us understand what these samples are or how do they compare to each other? So there is a code breakdown that we'll skip here for a second. But here you can see an example output. And in the example output on this principal component by plot, you can see the separation of samples into multiple groups. And you can see that there are a lot of samples. There's over 50 samples in this case. Now, just having black dots is not very useful. So we can add labels, but since we don't remember what each one of these labels stands for, maybe what's useful is to also color those samples by group type. So now as we get to this uh, example, we'll see how to run principal component analysis and how to make the most out of our visualization. And as a result, you will see here an example of what we will produce. A three-dimensional plot with multiple groups, colored, multiple groups of samples, colored by their type. So you can see here, green is basal, blue, dark blue is cloud and low, and pink, luminal, and then light blue, normal light. Okay, so as you will see throughout this code, it is fairly simple, just like we did when we load the data, it is very straightforward. You take the code that is already here, you can run it and you can see what the output will look like. Now, as you will try, you will start seeing different types of outputs. For example, here you can see an output of that principal component analysis in a two-dimensional uh, plot, by plot is what it's called. You will see the groups are circled, and you'll also see that the variability between samples is calculated and placed on the X and the Y axes. Beyond the basics, which is down here, you will find additional options that such analysis can give you. And that includes some clustering options, a better understanding of confidence of these different groups or how certain we are that these groups actually separate the way that they're described 
and also some additional methods for trying to interpret how do the individual features or genes in this case can help us understand the variability that we observe in this principal component analysis. So this is a brief explanation of what this data science program will actually look like. So in this example, we looked at an R script. We'll do the same for Python. And we will also go into more advanced visualization, machine learning, and biological interpretation. Beyond this, you will also gain access to courses that deal with specific data types, including genomic data, metagenomic data, transcriptomic data. So you will actually be able to go in different, into different examples, understand what this transcriptomic data describes, see the specifics of visualization and interpretation for these different types of data, and also get introduced to specific projects as described in this session. So again, I welcome you to join us for this upcoming program. And I hope that this presentation gives you a clear understanding of what this program will provide for you, as well as how you can try to apply these types of uh, methods to uh, go into your own area of research. So again, as Beepson mentioned, if you want a detailed description of how we will cover these topics in the different interactive sessions, just like we did today, you can go to this page and look through the schedule. So the program will start on January 12th and it will continue all the way until February 11th, after which point you will be able to work on an independent project as was shown by Bipsa and by Mohit. So in those independent projects, what you will do is you will learn how to find the data set on NCBI. It will be a publicly available domain, public domain uh, data set. You will then go through the specific details of how this data set was prepared to understand the biological context, apply some of the methods that we have described in and learned throughout the sessions, and then interpret that, that result. Now, to understand what a final product looks like, Bipsa has already shared the example, but I also want to ask you to take a look at our YouTube channel, where we have a lot of examples of student projects after they have completed the, their uh, training, and also join our network, which is on LinkedIn and on Facebook. So Bipsa, if you could please post those links, so three links, YouTube channel, the Facebook and the LinkedIn groups. And also, if you could, again, post the link to the data science program registration. This is the pre-registration link and the actual registration link is datascience.omicslogic.com, where you will find all of the details of final registration. And now we would love to hear any feedback or any questions that you might have so that we can answer any questions or anything that was confusing during the session, we can clarify. Yes, and all of the links will be sent to your email as well. All right, great. So thank you. Um, any other questions we will try to address by email. We also have a live chat on our website, so you are welcome to ask any questions along the way. We're looking forward to your participation. Um, as you have seen, we have multiple ways that you can benefit from the resources that we've prepared. You can either do it independently on your own asynchronous time. Many of you have already registered on the different websites that we have. So you can explore there what types of exercises are available, what data sets are available, what projects are available. And then if you're interested in a mentor-guided interactive session, you're welcome to join the full program and also request a one-on-one -on -one guided session with a mentor and 
Also, we have research opportunities for those of you that are interested in developing independent projects. So please do reach out to us about those details. Thank you, and we hope to continue and see you in our network.